Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.5 Beta 1. iOS 17.5 Beta 1 is available for developers and soon to public beta testers, usually by the time you're watching this video or the following day. And this particular update came in at 6.48 gigabytes. That's going to be fairly large to install as it reinstalls the whole OS. Anytime you go from a public version to a beta or from a beta back to a public version. Along with this, Apple also released a lot of different updates iPad OS 17.5 beta one watch OS 10.5 beta one, as well as updates for TV OS and home pod OS Mac OS 14.5 beta one, and even vision OS 1.2 beta one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 21F5048F. This particular update includes new features and changes depending on where you live as well. It varies, but we do have a new modem update. So if you were having issues with connectivity, hopefully this resolves them or improves them a little bit. We haven't had a beta update since February 27th with iOS 17.4 RC. So it's been a long time. Now, as far as new features. The first thing is, well, when I booted up the phone the first time, my home screen actually showed the Apple ID and said hello. So I saw this on some devices and not all. EU sideloading via the web has been brought to this update. That's something Apple talked about before, and now it's finally here. If you're in the European Union, a developer can decide to actually use their app and maybe place it on their own website instead of having to have a third-party app store, and then you can install it. So you may get an option to do that a little bit later on. Also the pop-up when you go to install an app, whether it's from the app store or from spotlight search will now pop up and still give you that information. Apple apparently hasn't fixed it. It wasn't a bug it seems, and now it will pop up and do that. Now, if we go into settings and we go down to battery, you'll see here where it says charging title, there's a bit of an issue. Some of the code is messed up here where it says charging fixed limit, charging off. So that's something they'll need to fix in future beta updates. However, some of the things noticed within the code would indicate that the iPad is getting a cycle count in the future as well. Now that could be for the next generation iPads that are expected maybe in early May, but it looks like probably by the time iOS 17.5 releases, we'll have those new iPads as well. So that could in include that. As far as other new features, if we slide over here and we go to the books app, there's a new spot up in the upper right where we actually have a counter that lets us know how we've progressed or reached any reading goals. If we tap on this here, it brings us right to our reading goals. You'll see where it scrolled down. Let's go back to the top, it brings us to our reading goals and it says explore the bookstore. So it says today's reading of your five minute goal. Of course, I haven't used this today at all, but you'll see read every day, see your stats soar and finish more books. So as you progress through that, you have a little meter in the upper right. And there's actually a little splash screen or pop-up that shows with that as well. I took a screenshot of it and you'll see this is what it looks like. It says reading goals, quickly find your daily reading progress, streaks and more. So that's something they've added to books. Also, one thing they've brought back, which is really nice, has to do with podcasts. If you're playing a podcast, it will now match the color on the widget itself. So if I press play, you'll see it just changed. And of course, it's playing as a live activity. But if we go in and maybe change podcasts here, we'll go to a different one. Maybe we'll go to this one and play the latest episode, swipe home. It then matches some of the background. It changes based on what you're actually listening to. This was in iOS 17.4 and they've brought it back. Also to go along with this widget change, there's a small change here with the weather widget. You may or may not even notice it as it's fairly small, but you'll see that the actual font is a little bit different. On the left is iOS 17.4.1, on the right is 17.5. I actually noticed this right away as the actual font is smaller. However, I haven't changed the font size on the devices, and I also verified that they're the same on both devices. So they've just changed it in the widget. Maybe they'll bring it back, I'm not sure, but I liked the more bold status of maybe the temperature itself. Under privacy and security, there's a change here as well. So if we go back, and then we go down to privacy and security and scroll down, under passkey access for web browsers, we now have an icon. Before this, we didn't have an icon at all, so it's just a little bit of an update where they've added that. Also with Vision OS 1.2 Beta 1, Apple added a new feature called Spatial Personas. If we go to X or Twitter, Ray Wong actually had the chance to check this out, and it basically puts a persona within the room with you so that you could present something, whether that's a keynote or something else, or maybe pages or a presentation, and they can move around their room, but they can't see your room. So it's a way to present. Maybe I'll try it out and let me know if you'd like to see that in a video. Also to go along with that, Apple did update 
keynote pages and numbers today, or their iWork suites of apps. If we go into the app store and in the app store, if you type in iWork, you'll see all of them, but we have pages, numbers, and keynote that was updated today. If we go into pages, you'll see the new features that were updated a few hours ago, where it says on iPad, press and hold the command key on the connected keyboard to select non-contiguous word sentences or paragraphs using a trackpad or mouse. You have in-app notifications that have been streamlined and much more. So if you use these apps, I actually use these regularly, unless you're using something like numbers where you need something maybe more advanced like Excel, I find it to be pretty good as well. And then Kino is much better than pretty much any other presentation app such as PowerPoint or anything else. So lots of updates there also. Now, some things they haven't updated are the clock with the stopwatch. So if we go into stopwatch, press start, swipe home, we don't have a live activity. For a long time, we've had timers and everything else that have worked, but we don't have a live activity for the stopwatch. Apple brought that in previous iOS 17.4 betas and then removed it. So we don't have that. We also don't have the Apple Music share play option that worked with HomePod or TV as well. So maybe they'll add that later on, but so far we haven't had that. Now, as far as bug fixes and release notes, well, the odd thing is Apple hasn't released any release notes yet. They haven't updated their website. It just says the page you're looking for can't be found. And if we go into the feedback app, the same thing is true. They haven't updated it with iOS release notes, but we have all of of the others here. However, as far as things that seem to be fixed so far, well, AirDrop seems to be much faster. So if we go into the phone photos app, go to AirDrop, let's AirDrop to the iPad here, give it a second, transfers immediately, and then is there. It seems to be super fast overall. And again, it's already on the iPhone 11, which is much faster than anything I've had before. Also, one user said that when they access the camera from the lock screen, it seems to fix an issue where sometimes they would be stuck on the camera. So press and hold, it would be stuck. They couldn't get out of the camera. Now it's working for them. I never had that issue, but it seems that some people did. As far as bugs that remain, well, the wallpaper dimming bug is definitely still there where it sort of desaturates. I'm not sure why, but it's still there for my phones at least, and also the volume bug is still yet to be unknown or any other ones. It can take a few days to notice that for sure. As far as performance, well, other than the airdrop being very fast or airdrop in general, everything seems to be smooth. However, it's only been an hour or two at this point since using it. So far, things are loading quickly, going into music. Maybe if we play some music, it plays quickly, goes to the dynamic island smoothly. I haven't really seen any issues so far, at least in the couple hours using this. As far as the overall heat of the device, it does feel a little bit warm, but we just installed a six gigabyte update, but nothing alarming, not as hot as even when 17.4.1 was in there. So when we've got this running regularly after a couple days, we'll be able to measure that more clearly. As far as battery life, well, let's go ahead and take a look at that. If we go into settings, we'll go back into battery. Under battery health, this is my main phone. I have 150 cycles at this point with 99% battery capacity, pretty good overall. And as far as the last 10 days, well, it's been okay. Not great at all, depending on who you ask. Yesterday, I had three hours and one minutes of screen active time, two hours and 32 minutes of screen idle time, and used 75% of my battery. However, some people are getting 10 hours of screen on time. I've just not seen that myself. So hopefully it improves over the next couple of days. So far today, we're down to 64% and I have two hours and 26 minutes of screen active time already. That's an improvement already, but hopefully it continues to get much better, but we'll have to check this out over the next few days, see if it improves and talk about it in the weekend follow-up video. As far as if you should install iOS 17.5 beta one, well, if you're not a developer or you have a secondary phone, then definitely you can try it out, but it should have some bugs here and there. Typically you'll have issues. And if you do, you'll want to report them in the feedback app to help Apple out and just make them aware of any bugs you're having. But at this point, I'd probably wait until at least beta two or beta three to try it out unless you have an extra phone or your phone is backed up. As far as iOS 17.5 beta 2's release date, well, at this point, we don't know 100%, but usually it's within two weeks with the first couple of betas. So maybe Tuesday the 16th or Wednesday the 17th, sometime around that time frame. However, this year has been kind of random, so we could see it maybe next week. We don't really know at this point until we see if they release it. Also, the other day, Apple unsigned iOS 17.4, meaning you can no longer downgrade to it. So maybe we could see a different release before iOS 17.5 releases to the public. Maybe we'll see the 17.5 public release sometime in early May around those iPads we're possibly expecting. And also in between that, 
that we could see an iOS 17.4.2, maybe with security updates, additional bug fixes and more. So we're waiting to see what Apple does with that. We don't know hundred percent just yet. Also, of course, in June is WWDC on June 10th, as Apple announced, and we'll see iOS 18 beta one on that day, typically after the event and the keynote. So we should have a major update there. And then typically we'll have betas all the way until September, where we have a final public release of that. We'll also have iOS 17 betas at the same time. Now, as far as the benchmarks, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I ran these pretty much right after installing. So it's actually pretty good considering that I have 2,905 for single core, 7,138 for multi-core compared to the previous update. You'll see that I ran on Saturday. It's very close overall and well within what you would expect. It's much better than even some of the earlier ones I ran. So overall it's performing well. And again, we'll check that on the weekend and see how it's holding up. Of course, if I find any other features or changes, I'll be sure to let you know in a follow-up video this weekend. And if you've found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.